With cloud computing, we took all of our standards and guidelines and the FedRAMP program, the Federal Authorization Risk Management Program that is run by GSA, they took all of our standards and guidelines and it gave the uh, federal government a clear statement of requirements and security controls that are required in any cloud provider, a cloud service provider, and also a methodology on how to assess those controls once they implemented all those controls so our customers on the federal side would have greater confidence to know that if they go to one of those cloud service providers and they move their applications and their data into the public cloud, they have confidence that that cloud is well protected. The FedRAMP requirements are very strong. They, they talk about how do you protect a system that's low impact, moderate, and now they're moving into the high impact area. That will give customers, again, greater confidence. If they have moderate or high impact data and they can see that the set of controls that FedRAMP is levying on the cloud providers is providing that level of protection they need, that gives them greater confidence. And so for some of their information, they can feel very good about sending that to the public cloud. If they have data that they consider very sensitive, they're just not ready to go to the public cloud, they can still look at building a private cloud which takes advantage of the on-demand nature of the cloud. And that's really a tremendous cost savings because it's not just the initial investment in the information technology. There's a maintenance tail to every initial investment. And so every dollar that you save up front may save you $10 on the maintenance tail of that long term. The cloud service providers, even in the public sector side, they have a vested interest in making sure that cloud is secure as they can make it because they want their customers to feel good about bringing their critical data to, uh, to that cloud. So they're innovating, they're bringing all the best practices that some come from the NIST standards and guidelines, some of their own, but they are building the strength of mechanism in that cloud that are going to make their customers confident that they can do business and not just do business, but actually be more productive in that kind of environment. So I'm, I'm very optimistic about where the cloud technology is heading, but not all data is equal. Uh, some has much greater value and, and has to be protected accordingly. So when you talk about FedRAMP levels going from low and moderate and then eventually to high, that's going to reflect an architectural engineering solution within that cloud solution that is going to say, look, it, we have this data which is a little bit more valuable than the other data that we have over here. And the fact that we can put that into its own domain, it'll be a cloud domain, but the, the, the basic protections around that domain are going to be stronger than the protections that we have on this other domain. I call this the safe deposit box model. I have a lot of important things in my house, but I can't fit them all into a safe deposit box. But I do understand some of my possessions are more critical, more valuable, maybe a coin collection, maybe your birth certificate. I take those that are highly critical or valuable and I go out and I find um, an isolated area where they can be better protected and that ends up being the safe deposit box in the vault in the bank. It's more work to get there and take stuff in and put it, take it out, but I know I have greater confidence that the protections that are provided by that environment are greater than just having it in my house, even with locks on my front doors and things that I would traditionally use to protect the house. So it's no different with data. We're gonna see that same type of mentality play out in information technology systems in general, and it's going to be applied to the cloud as well.